Hi there, I'm Anand Kulkarni, and as Mika said, uh, I'm the founder of a company called Lead Genius. We're a technology company that for the past five years has been working on questions of how we can improve equity and fairness in online and digital work systems. So by digital work systems, I refer to the category of online labor marketplaces that have buyers and sellers of people's time. Systems like Amazon Mechanical Turk, Upwork, or even systems like Freelancer, as well as digitally mediated gig economy systems like Uber, Postmates, TaskRabbit, and Lyft, all fall under the digital work umbrella. So if you've been following this space, you may have watched it with a combination, like I have, of enthusiasm and some trepidation. The enthusiasm comes from the fact that digital work has promised us a fundamentally different kind of work, something that can actually benefit workers by providing increased flexibility, fairer pay, the opportunity to do work that is more in line with our interests, and the ability to be free from the constraints of a physical office. In fact, in a perfect world, we'd all be digital workers living as digital nomads. Unfortunately, the reality of digital work has been something very different. In some ways, it's been a race to the bottom. Companies that employ digital workers have more or less been allowed free reign in how they treat and contract with a community of online contractors. Because most online workers are 1099 contractors, there are effectively no limits on how little they can be paid. Beyond that, because there is steep competition between providers of work on these platforms, as well as competition between these platforms and each other, there's been a downward pressure on wages and on the availability of work for any given person trying to work and eke out a living in these systems. Because workers in many of these platforms are unable to communicate with each other via the platforms themselves, it's hard for these workers to try and uh, take collective action or aggregate for the, um, in order to advocate for their own rights. The really interesting thing is that this model isn't just bad for the worker. It's also bad for the people who are trying to purchase work or services from freelancers on these systems. My favorite example of a negligent offender here is Amazon's Mechanical Turk site, where people are paid a few cents to a few dollars to do small online tasks. Because the work is paid so little, the most effective way to get a living wage is to do the work as quickly and with as low a quality as you can. This means that the recommended way for people to buy work from Amazon Mechanical Turk is to simply ask the work to be done by five or six different people in the hopes that somebody will choose to do it right. This model doesn't work for anyone. <laughs> okay, so uh, about five years ago, um, myself and two other graduate students at the University of California, Berkeley, uh, asked if there was a, a different model that we could apply um, in trying to design an online work system. And we tried to think about a digital work platform that would put workers at its core and represent their interests first. Um, and this model was based on a theory that you could get better outcomes, uh, not just as a moral imperative for platforms to take on their own accord, but because uh, people who did work under this model, if they were earning fair pay, would be able to be more invested in the outcomes, do a better job, and ultimately deliver better results for customers. We put in three core tenets. The first is that we put in a, a price floor for how much people would earn in our, in our system. They would earn fair hourly wages keyed to international standards for living wages in their own countries. The second was that we would invest in people, giving them the chance to advance and earn promotions in the system. And third, we'd give them a voice by giving them a community of peers with whom they could interact and advocate for improvements in the system. We recruited all over, uh, individuals from all over the world to join uh, the system that was then called Mobile Works and today is called Lead Genius. Our first community was 10 workers living in a slum in Mumbai, India. They were soon joined by 10 villagers who were living uh, outside of New Delhi. Uh, after that, we worked with groups in the United States, civic governments, nonprofits, to try and recruit people from all over the world. We found veterans through a group called Work for Warriors in California. We found refugees who were paid in Bitcoin through a group called Asylum Access in Nevada. We even partnered with civic entities here in New York City to find underemployed urban youth who wanted to get into online work. You can see here some of these folks learning from our team uh, in Jamaica. The remarkable thing was that this model actually worked. 
Um, we put this team to work doing not transportation or uh, physical deliveries, but the remarkably sexy and interesting work of online sales and marketing digital research, all on a contract basis, uh, a category which had lots and lots of demand. And we found remarkably that we were able to succeed in providing work that was meaningful, well-paid, and uh, a model of work that delivered good results for our customers as well. You can see here that we've managed to pay out about $5 million a year um, in this year, 2016, uh, and that number is growing year on year. So about a year ago, Palak Shah, who is at the National Domestic Workers Alliance um, and who spoke at PDF last year, came to us with a proposition, which was that we could take some of the principles that we were already applying and uh, make a more public commitment to them in the form of something called the Good Work Code. The Good Work Code is a set of common sense principles, a framework for understanding how online work systems can create good digital jobs and in doing so create good business. We signed onto the code and it wasn't just us. There are 12 companies from all different sectors and all different kinds of industries that use digital workers that have committed to using the Good Work Code as a framework to push themselves to improve. You can see that some of these come from the purely digital uh, research space like Lead Genius and Amara. Some come from physical gig work, like uh, managed by Q and Care, and some even manage to come from professional advanced work, like the artists working in Sketch Deck and the veterinarians working in Vet Pronto. The Good Work Code consists of a set of eight common sense values. We think these values are not just a moral imperative, not just a set of rules. This isn't regulation. This is a set of tools that we think make for good business. Companies that follow these principles when thinking about how to design their online work platforms will end up winning in the open marketplace, not just of ideas, but of products and services. The way that we've applied this in our own community is to conduct, simple as it sounds, a survey. We asked our community to rate how well we were doing on these eight principles, and what we found surprised us. For an organization that was thinking about these issues from day one, we didn't get it all right, um, even though we had fought hard in almost every decision we had made to commit to living wages and giving back to our community, our team told us that we weren't paying enough. So these point to directions to improve. Um, I think one of the best things about the Good Work Code is the idea that we as companies, as digital work uh, platforms, and as the people who are watching these platforms can choose to push these companies in a direction that leads us to improve, um, even if regulation hasn't quite caught up to us yet. We found all kinds of other things in this survey that make me quite hopeful that digital work uh, has a prominent future as opposed to a negative one. Um, here's what we learned from our own community, who you can see behind me. Um, we found out that good work following the good work code can be very empowering. Here's a quote from one of our workers. She says, my life is so all caps, so much better since starting with Lead Genius. All the jobs here locally are dead-end jobs with low wages and no advancement at all. Lead Genius helped me break free from the dead-end job cycle. We know that good digital work, when it's following the Good Work Code, can support livelihoods. We heard from Shadika in Jamaica, who told us that Lead Genius for her was about financial stability. Before joining Lead Genius, I was struggling to find the means to survive on a daily basis. I am grateful because now I no longer know what it means to go hungry. And of course, we know that good digital work can support lives. And it can support lives that go beyond just the people who are directly working in these online work platforms, but can extend to their families as well. Um, we had an anonymous response on our survey. Somebody told us that they started working in our online work system on a rented computer uh, with a broken chair with six members of their family staying in a single 64-foot uh, uh, apartment. Those days were very hard for us. Uh, over time, my earnings increased. After a year, I could buy a laptop, and eventually now I've moved into a new home where my family can live. Now I support my nieces and nephews in their own education. Whoever you are, thank you. Even though I'm a freelancer, because of the security, the community, and the unity, it feels like I am truly a part of Lead Genius. So these are examples of how this system can work uh, not just for us, but for all kinds of companies. Um, our experiences have been that the Good Work Code is a flexible framework that we can apply in a variety of contexts, but there's still lots more to do. We as a civic tech community and a tech for good community uh, should think about three things. 
when we think about how we can uh, assist systems like the Good Work Code in reaching more communities. The first is, if you work in an organization or if you know organizations that are using digital workers, and it's very likely that whether or not you know about it, you do, uh, that you can use the Good Work Code uh, to develop an assessment inside your own organization as to how you're treating digital workers or gig economy workers that you're hiring. If you don't work at a company like this, figuring out other ways to elevate the good work movement by working on best practices that can be exported and shared throughout these companies or working on algorithms, software, or tools that can be used by digital workers when selecting which platforms to work for. The last and most important thing is to help good work code companies compete and win in the market. Uh, choosing to support good work companies at the end of the day can't happen just because of regulation or just because uh, we think there are righteous reasons to do so. These companies have to ultimately be chosen by consumers of products and services as the best, as the best companies that are out there. And given that we have a choice when picking which companies to do business with, choosing companies that choose to treat workers fairly seems like a natural one. When I look at this space, I can't help but think that we're at a crossroads in how we as a society are looking at gig work and digital work. There's more attention than ever being paid to the status of online workers by media, by regulators, and by entrepreneurs. And as we know in civic tech, regulation isn't going to get there first, which means it's up to us. Um, the reality is that we have a choice. Digital work isn't going away. It's becoming the norm. Every day we hear about more and more systems that are being sliced up, farmed out to freelancers, and put online. Everything from science to engineering to journalism. Um, the systems that we're allowing to survive and succeed today are the ones that our children are ultimately going to inherit. We have a choice. I hope that we choose good work. Thank you.